trees are all over the place. They're big, they're tall, they're made of wood, they're alive. But how do they work? How do they grow? And what makes something a tree? Today, we're gonna to be talking about those things and I think it's pretty cool. But first, what are trees? Well, trees are perennial plants, which means that they can grow for many years, as opposed to annual plants, which can grow for one year, will then make seeds and then die, or biennials, which grow for two years, set seed and then die. Trees can keep growing. Some trees can grow for hundreds of years. They have got these woody stems, which we call trunks, which allow them to get to quite a significant height. And typically, they'll have lateral growths coming out of them called branches. That's how I'm thinking of trees. And depending on who you ask and what definition you look at, you might get different kinds of plants fitting into what we would call trees because, well, there's no one species of tree. We have tried to understand plants in such a way that we have just categorized these tall woody things into what we call trees, but humans didn't design these things. And so it's a little bit hard sometimes. Let me show you, let's do some sorting. Many plants can be easily categorized into being a tree or not a tree. This oak, for example, definitely a tree. Look at that trunk. What about this Monstera deliciosa? Mm. Not a tree. Whilst it is a perennial and it can live for a long time, it doesn't have a woody stem. It actually grows on trees. Eucalyptus, this gum tree, yes, it's a, it's a tree. Look at that trunk, those branches, it can get very old. Tomato plant, it has a stem, it has branches, I suppose, but it doesn't have that woody stem and it only lives for a year. This is an annual. Grass, oh, of course, not a tree. It doesn't even have a trunk. Roses? I, oh, I mean, they can have trunks. They're woody, they're, they live for multiple years, they can live for a long time even. But it doesn't feel like a tree, even though it has lots of these characteristics. Huh. Now, sometimes we come against this tricky scenario where a plant doesn't quite fit what we would think of as being a tree. And this is just because plants don't easily fit into our boxes that we create. Tree is a way of describing a very large variety of plants and some plants dwell on the fringe of being categorized as trees or not. Some people would consider woody shrubs to be trees, but lots of others wouldn't. So we know generally what a tree is, but how do trees work? What makes them live? How do they get their energy? Well, trees, just like all plants, get their energy from sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. A chemical reaction happens within their leaves, called photosynthesis, which when all three of those things are present, sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, they will turn that into energy. As a result of photosynthesis, the trees are able to produce cellulose, which is what a tree uses to produce energy and to make new cells. It also produces oxygen as a byproduct of that, which it releases back into the atmosphere. During photosynthesis, the cellulose is made by taking carbon from the carbon dioxide to then release the oxygen. That carbon is kept within the tree and goes into the cells, which means that quite literally speaking, Trees, plants, are made of air. They've taken that carbon and they have made that into new cells, which is, I think, pretty amazing. So these ingredients, so sunlight, well, that comes from the sun shining onto the leaves. And you might not see a lot of leaves around where I am. That's because the leaves are all up in the canopy, which is 40, 50, 60 meters above me, where the sun is able to shine much more easy than where I am, which is a lot more shaded. The carbon dioxide, that just comes from the air around us, the atmosphere, that's easy to access for the leaves. But where does it get its water from? Well, we know that plants use roots to get water. Roots also anchor the tree into the ground so it doesn't fall over, you know, these things are pretty sturdy. But how does a tree get water from its roots, which are below me, to the leaves, which are 40, 50, 60 metres that way? Trees don't have any moving parts they can't get the water to the leaves mechanically. They don't have any pumps or systems to push or pull water by moving things. So 
How does it get water to the leads? Huh. But first I have a question for you. Let's think of all of the water that trees absorb through their roots. How much of that is used to make new cells? As a percentage, is it, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 percent? You know, these trees, they're, they're massive, so they've got to use a lot, and they grow. Well, some can grow quite quickly. Go on, say it out loud. <laughs> no cheating here. What percentage of the water the plant uses is used for new cells, for growth? It's actually only about 5%, and that's the max. So only 5% of the water that a tree absorbs is used for creating new growth and new cells. Oh, so for every cup of water that a tree absorbs, it'll only store and use about oh, a tablespoon, which is not very efficient. Where does the rest of that water go? Well, trees send it straight back into the atmosphere. It gets evaporated through a process called transpiration. Why is, why do they do that? That seems like a real waste. Why do they get rid of 95% or more of the water that they absorb? They could grow a lot quicker if they didn't. Well, let's talk about transpiration. Transpiration is when a plant sends water through their leaves to be evaporated. It takes in water at its roots, then send it through the trunk and branches through the xylem, then out the leaves through tiny pores called stomata. They do this because they have no other method of pulling water throughout the tree. Well, push or pull. When the water evaporates from the leaf, the molecules leave, causing there to be a decrease in pressure. Then, due to higher pressure being within the tree, it pushes water up so that it can be evaporated to correct the lower pressure. This allows more water to evaporate, causing lower pressure, causing more water to be pushed up, causing it to evaporate, etc. Water is also cohesive. Water molecules like to stick to other water molecules. This effectively makes water molecules a chain so the water can be pulled throughout the plant. This is transpiration. Plants using evaporation to pull water throughout the plants. Even the tallest bits. The plant will take whatever water it needs to for photosynthesis to turn into plant tissue, but the transpiration process is important because without it, a plant could not get water throughout its body. If a plant gets too dry, it will then draw on water stored within its cells, which is why a dry plant will droop. But when it's watered, it will undroop as it refills the cells with water. This is described as terge pressure or turgidity. So trees use photosynthesis to create energy. It uses transpiration to draw water from the roots up to the top of the tree, to the leaves, wherever the leaves are, so that it can do this. But how do trees actually grow? Trees have two kinds of growth, primary and secondary growth. Primary growth is what makes it taller and longer. This growth comes from the apical meristems. An apical meristem is located at an apex of a plant. And a meristem is just a zone which is responsible for creating new cells. The apical meristems are located at any apex, which could be the tip of the trunk or the end of a branch. It's at the apex of a point, so the end of a branch or a trunk. It's not in the middle, it's not in between things, and it's what makes the tree longer or taller. So primary growth is taller or longer, and secondary growth is thicker or gaining girth. So you might have heard that you can tell the age of a tree or a branch by counting the growth rings. But why do trees have these? Well, branches and trunks get thicker over time. The cambium layer is responsible for this thickening. And the reason why trees have these growth rings on one side of the cambium layer is the xylem, and the xylem is the part of the tree which sends water from the roots to the leaves. It's the passageway for water. It flows in an upwards direction. On the other side, on the outside of the cambium layer, is the phloem, and that's the vascular tissue responsible for sending nutrition throughout the rest of the plant. Now, the reason why we have these grow rings is because at the start of each growing season, the cambium moves out so that it can continue to grow things outward to get thicker. In the very center, that's what we call the pith. That's the first year of growth. And then each year, it adds another ring. So looking at this one, I would say this tree is comfortably older than I am. Well, it was before it got cut down anyway. Each of these rings is a layer of xylem. So the xylem stays in the trunk. Once it's in there, it stays in there. 
The inner ones are a bit of a different colour to the outer ones. That's because the inner ones are no longer transporting water around. This is what we call the heartwood. Whereas the outside layers you'll see are a bit of a different colour. That's because they are still being used, well they were before this tree fell down, to transport water upwards throughout the tree. And this is called the sapwood. Where's the flower though? The tissue which sends nutrition throughout the rest of the tree from the leaves in either direction. Well, it gets pushed out and forms the bark. So we only have really one layer of flow on being used and the rest gets pushed out and becomes bark. So that's why we have these growth rings and that's why we have bark. Here's something else which is pretty cool. Trees aren't really related to other trees. It's true that they're all vascular plants, meaning that they have xylem and phloem to deliver nutrition and water throughout the whole body. But that's about as close as some of them get. You know, when we look at trees, they have got trunks, they've got branches, they're tall, they're woody, but that's not characteristic of any one plant family or even what any plant order. Trees, or being a tree, is most likely a strategy evolved independently by all different species of trees. It's beneficial if you are closely planted with other plants and they're getting taller, that you also get taller. And so over time, trees evolved. They evolved to be tall and they did this independently, which is why when we trace back all these different trees, they are genetically very different, but they all have these similar survival strategies. And in fact, some things which by some definitions we don't consider trees, palm trees for example, by some but the definition that we're using aren't trees, they don't have grow rings, they look similar to trees. And by some definitions we would call them trees because they are tall and they are perennial plants. So these are good strategies for plants to survive. Let's say, for example, I pair a eucalyptus tree and an oak tree and then I also pair a cat and a dog. And I ask you, which one do you think is more closely related? Oh, well, trees are trees. They, they must be more closely related. Cats and dogs, well, they're totally different species. They come from different families. And yet, the trees are not more closely related. Actually, cats and dogs are more closely related than our trees are. Cats and dogs, they're from different species, they're of a different genus, they're from different families, but they share the same order, carnivora, along with several hundred other species of animals. Whereas these trees, not even from the same order, they are less closely related than cats are to dogs. Having a trunk and branches does not define any particular group of plants. It's not a characteristic of any particular family or order of plants. It goes back much further because it's a strategy for survival. So being a tree is more of a survival strategy than it is being a particular species of plant. Trees aren't just there to look pretty either. Humans have been using trees for a very long time for all sorts of reasons. It turns out that wood is an extremely useful material for burning all of the cellulose in the wood makes it just an incredible fuel. So using it for warmth and for cooking things is extremely important and has been over time. It's also a great building material. It can be shaped, it is very strong. It can make tall things. It's durable, it's, it lasts a long time. It's just a great material. We also use trees for all sorts of different things. We enjoy them in our spaces. Making green spaces is great for people. And that's been a real draw to using trees for a very long time. We get a lot of our food directly from trees. And we also get paper and cardboard from trees. You know, cardboard boxes, paper, books. They all come from wood pulp, which comes from trees. Trees are extremely useful. But trees are also extremely important for the environment. Yes, they turn carbon dioxide into oxygen. Most of our oxygen actually comes from the ocean, but a good portion comes from trees as well. They clean the air, they can take out pollution. They're really important for our health, but also they are really important for biodiversity. I might just stop for a moment. See what we can hear. Forests take up about 30% of Earth's land mass. And while it's only 30%, 
it houses an estimated 80% of Earth's terrestrial life. So land dwelling organisms, 80% of the species live in forests. So only 30% of the land that houses 80% of life. So forests, really important. And encouragingly, our rate of deforestation, so we've actually, since the last ice age, we have cut a lot of forests down. But in the last 25 years, that rate at which we are cutting down forests has slowed by 50%, which is great, but we've still got a bit of a way to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and you came away learning something new about trees and to some extent have been filled with a sense of wonder. I think that trees are pretty cool and if you'd like to see more pretty cool things, please consider subscribing to That's Pretty Cool. I'm very excited to continue to make videos about amazing things. If you have something which you think is pretty cool, please feel free to comment that below. I'd love to know what you think is amazing as well. And who knows, I might even make a video about it in the future. Thanks again for watching. Take care, stay curious, and we'll see you next time.